All right. Thank you, guys. Thank you for joining me live today. My name is Guy, and I am here to share with you my experience, to share with you what I know, what I'm learning in this field, and also I share with you most of my labs that I do. So my name is Guy. You can follow me on Instagram and Facebook at Guy Bisuku. That's my personal. And you can also follow KB Trainings. That's where we talk about tech. We talk about cybersecurity. We talk about networking, the kind of things that can help you start or grow your career in the tech field and i'm happy to help you with that thank you so much for joining so today i'm going to talk about my nsc5 experience sometime two weeks ago i took the nsc5 exam and i was able to get it i actually got the certification so right now i am fcp which means 48 certified professional and i'm going to share with you some of the tips that i use and uh, first of all, I will be talking about my experience at the exam. How was it? What did I find there? And I'm going to talk about the study strategies that I used to be able to take the exam and pass it. And I'll also tell you about the resources and the tools that you can put in place to make sure that you succeed at the exam. Not only succeeding at the exam, but also knowing what you have to know for your career, because it's not about the paper. It's not about the title. It's about the knowledge that you acquire and the knowledge that you can use in a company somewhere to advance your career. Thank you so much. If you are live, say something in the chat. I'll be glad to read you. And uh, it's always good to have you live, guys. And also on Facebook, if you are watching us on Facebook, make sure you like the video. Make sure you subscribe to the I mean, you follow the page and also you share it on your, your feed with your friends and the people that are following you. All right, so the exam that I took is the NSC5. If we go on Fortinet's website under the different certifications, this is where I am. So NSC5, cybersecurity certification. I did the FCP, Fortinet Certified Professional. If you go under learn more, these are the exams that you need to take for the FCP. You can you need to take this one here, the NAC4 for the OS, which is the core exam. And you also need to take one of these elective exams. In my case, I took the NAC5 for the manager, but you can take the 40 client, 40 analyzer, uh, the 40 switch, 40 authenticator. All these exams will count uh, toward your FCP certification. And in the case of the 40 manager, the NAC5, if you go under get started over here, this is my account. This is my personal account. You should see the same thing. It, it's a free account that you can um, you can create anytime. So you go here. They show you all the different um, the different courses that are available right here. And uh, Fortinet does a really good job of having these courses available. And by the end of the live, I'll also tell you how I can help you because I've been studying all of this. I'm at NSC six right now. I'm studying for that and the NSC7, maybe by the end of the year, if everything goes well. Um, so I will probably be doing a lot of labs. I, I'm, I'm gonna put together something for you guys just to help you um, get this done with success and get the knowledge that you need. So if we scroll down here, we should see the 40 manager exam, it's right there. So I'm going to open it. And here you can download the course description. This is something good to have because it shows you in detail what are the objectives for the course and this is the agenda that you're going to cover here so you can do the instructor led instructor led if you are if you are like a partner if you can or uh, if you can get it uh, if you can subscribe to the instructor instructor led but you can also do the self-paced training that i'm going to show you in a moment that is available on the website so um this is there and then you can also go back and enroll for the exam when you click on enroll now this is the page for the course itself you can have the description over here you can buy the on-demand labs for hundred five dollars this will give you access to um, a virtual lab where you have everything you need to practice the lessons that you're going to see and I'm going to show you what is the alternative if you don't want to uh, Pay for the lab. You can still pay, which is good. It's an investment, right? But you can also build your own labs that you can follow with the, the lessons. When you're watching the lessons, you go on your own labs and you practice and all of that. It's going to be helpful as well. But there is a, an option to buy the labs here, which I encourage you to do because it's a good investment. And then you have the different lessons. One, 
through eight, and that's it. Or oh, one thing that I have to, I have to mention as well, you also have these sample questions that you can do at the end just to see how you stand, just to see how well you know the material. So that's also something useful. I just remembered because I didn't mention it in the French live. I just finished being live in French like 15 minutes ago. That's why I'm kind of late here. But let's get structured. First of all, my experience at the exam. How was it? It was good. I was well prepared. Even though something happened to me that I wouldn't advise um, you to do because I didn't sleep enough that night. Um, I tried to do it within less than two weeks or within a week. And uh, it was it was really tough. I studied like crazy. And even before the exam, the day before, um, I went out for a restaurant. I had some, I had a margarita, but I was still good enough. I came back home and I kept studying. I didn't sleep that night. My exam was at 9 a.m. On a, on a Sunday. So I went all the way to six and I was thinking, I'm like, do I have to sleep from six to nine? I'm like, no, maybe that's not a good idea because you can literally oversleep. It happened to me before. So around six, I decided to stay up and wait for 8.45 so I can log in for the exam. So don't do that. That's not good. You should have a good night of sleep before the exam so you can be focused and you will succeed. But if you if you can't, like in my case, I had to review some things really quickly and uh, really spend the night studying. Uh, but I'm glad it went well. But what I can tell you is that by the end of the exam, I was not sure. You know, sometimes you take an exam and you, you've been doing so good and you know that you're going to pass it. But in this case, I was not sure at the end of the exam. So it was one of those moments when you click submit and first of all, I like the fact that they have the flag uh, button up there. Since a couple months ago, from uh, from Pearson View now, when you take the exam, you have the flag where you can flag some questions and you can return to them because you can do next or preview or pre um, previous uh, le uh, question. So I flagged some questions, around ten questions that I had to go back on. So after I finished the exam, I went to I went back to all the flagged questions. And I tried to respond to the, bell, the, the best of my knowledge. And I submitted the exam. And boy, I was so happy when I saw that I passed. And I was even surprisingly, um, I was happily surprised because under those different categories of questions, I made 100% on most of them. I was just, I don't know, maybe because I didn't sleep or what, but I was just unsure when I was taking the exam. But that's a good thing. So you should be um, studying enough just to be well and use the, the, the knowledge that you have at the exam to pick the best answer and you will be fine. And if you don't, if you don't pass it the first time, just take it another time. Just go back, study again and come back. Because just like I said, it's not about getting certified, getting the title or the certificate. It's about getting the knowledge that you need. For the manager, it's something that I've, I was introduced to when I was working at Comcast back then, we had a lot of customers uh, using Fortinet. That's even when I discovered Fortinet and I also fell in love in Fortinet products because right now Fortinet ships. Okay, you know what? Let's not go into marketing right now. But yeah, I did uh, the Forty Manager because I think it was the easiest. Um, all the other ones uh, could have been a little, um, you know, uh, a little challenging, but Forty Manager was was very easy for me. And I'm going to show you the lab that I used in my own uh, in my own virtual environment to get my my preparation done. Let's let's take a look at uh, at YouTube and see what's going on over there. Hi everybody. Hi Banka IP. Good to see you every time live, and I'm glad you're here, man. And uh, for those on Facebook, thank you so much for watching. If you have any question or any comment, leave it in the in the chat. I'll be glad to read and respond. So that was my exam experience. I would say it was good. I was prepared enough, at least by the end of the night, I think I was good enough for the exam and I went and I took it and it was great. So what was my study strategy? First of all, I just showed you where to find the training from Fortinet. They're doing a great job of a great job over there. You have the trainings. You can go there and read what you want and watch all the lessons. At the end of the lesson, you will have um, enough knowledge to go and tackle the exam. And also, you can buy the labs that will help you uh, practice everything you learn in the lessons. 
each lessons has a lab that you can you can use to practice and that's my main thing that i use here and of course you have the documentation on 40 nets website where if you want to get some details if you want to clarify things that you didn't understand you can go there and read more and most of the questions are based on the documentation that is available and it's just general knowledge or general knowledge on the product that you are studying and also um the resources that i used I have a virtual environment that I shared with you here. This is actually my 40 manager that I currently have in my uh, in my home lab. I have free I have uh, no two atoms that I added on top of the root and the global database. So uh, this is where I do everything. My 40 gates are currently down as you can see here. But having a virtual lab is really really important because th and that, that's how I do it and it helps me. Because you don't have to wait for the labs, if you buy the lab on Fortinet's website, you don't have to wait for those labs to start practicing. What I do is every time I go through the lessons, if there is something of interest for me, if there is something that I learn that is new, directly I go to the lab and I practice it. I practice it. So I discover how to, I don't know, check the system status. Let's go back in the CLI. Let's say we're here. And we, I don't know if you were seeing my screen before, but I was sharing the screen with you. I don't know. But yeah, let's say we're here and we do get system status. I do this and then I'm going to analyze everything on here to see what kind of information am I getting from this command? What is the output and how can I use it sometime now or in the future for troubleshooting or anything else? So just be deep in what you're doing. Don't just do an overview of the lessons and expect to do well at the exam. Because the goal there is to acquire the knowledge, to know all the different commands that you need. So you need to go deep in the lessons. You need to go deep in the labs. When I learn something, I go in my lab, I practice it. When I hear something or how to find a certain configuration, I go in my lab and I find it and I try to play with it. I try even sometimes to break it and fix it. That's how you learn more. That's how you become really comfortable with a different product. So I will really encourage you to take that approach. It's going to help you. And uh, this is my environment. This is ESXi. You can do it in any other environment. You can do it in GNS3. You can do it. Let me actually show you my, uh, my ESXi right now. You can do it in... Um, you can do it in workstation. Uh, just a moment, I'm logging in in my ESXi. Okay, this is my ESXi environment and I have 17 virtual machines over here. This is the 40 manager that I just showed you. I have the 40 authenticator and you can download the VM, the 40 managers VM on 40 Nets website. If you have a 40 cloud account and you go under VM images, I've, I've made a video where I showed you how I downloaded some images, some 40 gate images for my GNS3. You can do the same for 40 manager, depending on your environment. And I don't think you need a license for it. But if you work, if you work for a partner, if you work for uh, a 40 net customer, you can request a test license, something, something like that. And uh, you have it for like two months and you'll be able to put it in your lab and practice everything you need. Uh, so that's something you should consider. So I also have some 40 gates over here. I have the 40 gate 741. I have the 7013. This one is the one that you can use without an actual license. You can use like a um, evaluation license with the 7.0.13. But from from all the for all the other versions higher than this, you need to find some kind of test license to be able to use it. And yeah, that's my lab, guys. And uh, that was the environment where I spent most of my time. Of course, watching the lessons and going in a lab and practicing everything that I was studying. And it helped me. By the end of the of the training, I think I was good enough and very comfortable to take the exam. And uh, yeah. So the, the advice or the tips that I can give you for success, just study hard. Just do it. Um, the exam itself is not hard, I think. You have about 30 questions, I think 30 or 35. And most of those questions are things that, were covered in the lessons. So if you did your lessons well and you practiced in your lab, you should be good enough at the test. You don't have anything to worry about. That's all I can tell you guys. The I did the NSC4 a couple of weeks ago and now I, I did the NSC5. I'm currently going for the NSC6 for the authenticator and we'll finish with the NSC7 by sometime, just like I said, at the end of the year if I can, but I, it's, it might be tough or a little tight, but I'll do my best to, to get it done. And uh, that's something you need to do for your career. It will really help you. Désolé, pas tout français, anglais. 
Um, okay. <laughs> I have uh, I have a viewer here that just watched me in French. Now he's in English here. And I appreciate that. Thank you so much. Merci beaucoup. Immerge Matala. On est partout. Français, anglais, on combine le tout. C'est vraiment bien. Faut toujours, uh, faut toujours booster les choses. Et l'anglais aussi, comme j'ai dit, c'est un bon truc à connaître dans le domaine. Sorry for those English speaking guys, because I'm, I have my French buddies over here trying to make me talk in, in French. But anyway, uh, if you have any questions, leave it in the comment. I'll be able to respond. And uh, yeah, the, the 40 manager has been uh, um, a good exam, a lot of learning, a lot of uh, refreshing of things that I knew before. And a lot of deep dive in some configurations and some diagnostic uh, uh, diagnose commands that I, I hadn't done before. So it's it's really good uh, exam that I would recommend to anybody who is in that kind of environment, or if you just want to boost or your, grow your career in general. Because most of what is done here, or even let's talk about the NAC4, the 40 gate. Most of those cybersecurity configurations or uh, threat mitigation configurations that you do on the 40 gate, you're going to find it on many other vendors. And they might call it differently, but it's literally the same concept. And that's why it's always good to know one vendor and know it well. So you'll be able to work with Cisco, with Palo Alto and all those other ones. You you know exactly what you're talking about and you have a broad knowledge on the industry itself and uh, the cybersecurity field. All right, I think that's that's all for today, guys. That's all I want to share with you. That's my experience of the exam. That's how I studied. And follow the same thing. You, you're you going to get it. Good job. Thank you so much, Christian. Thank you, Ibrahim. I'm glad to hear. Thank you so much. So, yeah, that was my experience with the NAC5. And again, oh, I can help you. I'm going to create something. Maybe not this year. Maybe sometime in Q1 or maybe Q2. I'm going to put together some kind of labs or some kind of uh, of uh, of course that will help you add on top of what you get from Fortinet and just get comfortable. I will share with you what I do in my lab because my lab design is different from the lab design that Fortinet is using. So I create usually my own and I put my own devices and I try to do it differently. It's just to give me exposure and I will expose myself to you and we'll shoot all of that. We'll put it in uh, together in the course and we'll propose on, uh, on my on my website. So if you are not on my mail list, make sure you go on kbtrains.com. This is the website kbtrains.com. That's where you can come here and start learning. So you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you get to the mail list or the mailing list. Make sure you put your first last name and your email and you pick what you want to study here and you join. So if there is anything new, I'll let you know. But for now, the main course I have is a CCNA course. If you want to go from zero to engineer and boost your career, kbtrains.com is the website where if you come here under CCNA training, I have a course that really goes from zero to engineer. I explain everything here. I answer some questions. And this is a course that is appreciated by a lot of people. I am actually surprised by the the feedback that I receive here. Everybody's literally really happy of what I'm doing. And I put it in a way that you understand. Because sometimes I had an issue when I started learning networking. Things were all over the place. I didn't have a structure that was allowing me to study from A to Z. Because it was like OSI model and all of that. I don't know what is OSI model and where does it fit in the whole scheme of things. But in my course, I go on my own way. But I make sure that I stay on the course objectives of Cisco to make sure you're going to get the CCNA. Not only the certification, but also the knowledge good enough to go from zero to engineer. Thank you, guys. So um, I think that's all for now, man. Uh, uh, you will probably find me on Instagram showing you the behind the scenes. And there was something that happened to me yesterday in my lab here. I was actually configuring this switch here. This is the USW8 Enterprise PoE from Unify. I was playing with it, try trying to create a 10 gig connection between my NAS and my desktop down here. But for some reasons, I messed up the UDM SE, which doesn't make any sense because this is a downstream switch. It shouldn't affect the UDM, but maybe something in the memory or whatever, it just lost its configuration. And I lost connectivity to most of my stuff here. Let me show you. Um, this is actually, let me show you this screen. It will show you exactly what was happening. Um, I can share this. Yes, this is, this is what I was using yesterday for troubleshooting. I'm pinging Google, I'm pinging my default gateway, my DNS and everything. So it was, it just went dark. For some reason, I lost connectivity. I lost the configuration of my UDMSE. And 
I am preparing myself to get my whole network, my home network uh, under 40 net with the 40 gate, 40 switch and 40 APs and all of that. But I'm not ready for that yet because I need to replace the UDMSE with an NVR so I can support my cameras. I have like 16 cameras under Unify Protect. But yesterday I was so ready to switch to Fortinet because the UDMS is just was just dead. But I made a video about it. It's going to come on the channel maybe in two or three days. I'll show you exactly my troubleshooting process. But um, bottom line is that I had to factory reset the UDMSE. And um, I was glad enough that I take the backup of the configurations every day. It's automatically created every day. So I was able to recover the latest backup and get up online, even though I lost the footage from the cameras, but everything else is fine and my network is now back and running. So really soon I'm going to do another project to install the UNVR and I'm also I'm going I'm going to install a new patch panel. I have like 48 ports that I have to install for the new switch that is coming. So if you want all of that, if you like what I'm doing, make sure you subscribe to the channel and you like the video so you can boost um, these videos to a bigger audience. That would be very helpful. Thank you guys for watching this. I will see you in the next one. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment. I will be glad to respond and uh, we'll come back to you with more details on uh, the things. Okay, I have a question here. So what I just gathered from you, you said we should get out the CCNA first before pushing NSC cert. I think that's a good route because... NSC is focused on cybersecurity mostly. No, it's literally cybersecurity. So to me, I think you would be comfortable in cybersecurity if you are good in networking first and you have all that base that you need to know in networking, security, cloud, and all of that. And that's something you get from the CCNA. The CCNA will give you the ground on which you're going to build. When you go for the NSC4, for example, you don't study networking on NSC4. It's it's like they're assuming that you are already or you're already comfortable in LAN, WAN, and all those things. And now you're just applying it to secure your network or to, to, to secure yourself from threats out there. So I would advise to go with the Cisco CCNA first. You are good at networking. If you already have a career, if you've been working in the field for a while, you know all the networking concepts and all of that, that's fine. But if you are a starter, if you are new, CCNA will give you all the base that you need to know, all the bases or... Um, uh, whatever you need to know to build networking, security, cloud, wireless, and all of that, it's included in the CCNA. And I'm not saying that just because I have a course, but I'm saying that because I think that's the right way of doing it. I started with a CCNA course because I think that's the basic, at least that everybody needs to be able to be successful because Cisco does a good job in that training where they go deep in things that you literally have to know to, be, um, to boost or start a career. Yes, that was a question from Shadwick Tyrone. Thank you so much, Shadwick. Um, I think if there's no other question, I'll be just responding to the comments. If you have any, just leave it there. And I'll see you in the next one. Take care and bye. I'm going to cut to YouTube now. And we also take a look at Facebook.